most people in the United States don't get enough sleep and that the sleep they get is not a high enough quality. Well, what do we do about that? How do we change that? Dr. Sadza's research really has been, you know, pioneering uh, in, in the field. The stuff that he's done has, has really laid the foundation for how we're going to improve sleep and then hopefully human health. Chuck's work has changed medicine by really elevating an area of health that was previously almost completely unrecognized. Both the rigor with which he did initial work looking at circadian biology and trying to define the human circadian clock, and then his work taking that and translating it into occupational impacts and policy has been unprecedented. So I grew up on the south side of Chicago. My uh, father was a general practitioner, a physician, taking care of several thousand families. My father's work in medicine was always very inspirational to me because he took care of so many patients and he was so beloved. As a kid, you know, always interested in science projects and trying to understand how things worked. When I was in college and I began to take pre-med courses and I was really drawn to the science side of things. I remember coming out to my Stanford interview and I was interviewed by Bob Alway, who had been Dean of the Stanford Medical School. And he was incredibly kind when I went out there. He said, we'd really like you to come to Stanford. And my question is, what can we do to recruit you here? And I, I almost collapsed at that point because I was so excited about this potential opportunity. Bob thought about who on the Stanford faculty would be most appropriate for me to see. And that's when he had recruited David Hamburg as well as Bill DeMent, who ended up being so instrumental in my own career. When we started the Stanford Clinic, we knew, well, almost nothing, I would say, decided to start the clinic so it would become a resource and patients would come. But to, to my surprise, the most common patient was one who had a complaint of excessive daytime sleepiness. And uh, that became really the engine that, that drove the field for quite a while. I remember sitting around a conference room at the Stanford uh, Sleep Disorders Center so there I was as a medical student in this MD-PhD program, and I'm sitting there working on the classification of an entire class of sleep disorders. And the framework that we established at that time is essentially the same 45 years later. So I think uh, Dr. Sizer's training at Stanford, really uh, the thing that comes through the most is with Bill DeMent being his, his mentor. You know, Bill is someone who is really a promoter of sleep and understanding sleep. And Dr. Seisler really, I think at Stanford, kind of really took to heart this message that, you know, it's not good enough to just do the science, that you have to be able to communicate that science and relay that to, you know, society if you really want to change how things are done. I think of him as my best student. He was so into the literature and it was an easy mentorship in a sense. He sort of knew everything in advance. Now, one thing that was that was really extraordinary about my experience and, and, and my PhD research at Stanford was the freedom that they allowed me. Elliot Weitzman, when he was on his way back to New York, he said, we have a whole floor, we have a whole facility that we could build together to carry out these experiments that we have dreamed about. And so they essentially let me set up what I sort of euphemistically called Stanford in the Bronx. When I first joined the Harvard faculty and I was in my first year, the dean he invited me to give a talk on the impaired physician. There's a rebuttal and the chief resident of, of surgery got up and said, we, thank you very much, Dr. Seisler. We don't do shift work. We have very regular schedules. We're on for 36 and off for 12. And it's like, okay, great, no problem. But then I sort of set out on a mission because I could have an opinion, but we didn't have data. So we began collecting data. And the first data that we collected we were, we were able to show that, that something like 40, 50% of them were, were crashing their cars on the way home. Working with Chris Landrigan, we showed that there was a significant increase in the risk of serious medical errors working on the intensive care unit. We have come to understand over the past couple of decades that sleep deprivation and circadian misalignment not only drive decrements in human performance in occupational settings, but they also drive a host of disease processes, everything from heart disease to cancers to obesity to diabetes. Chuck's work has helped to make that translation happen. I'm beginning to understand how circadian biology in particular impacts some of these factors. The demonstration that we're sensitive to light is probably the most important finding of my career. 
It turns out that we're just as sensitive as a cockroach is to resetting of our circadian rhythms with light. Dr. Sardis' mentorship was kind of invaluable to me. Uh, I definitely would not be where I am today uh, without that. How do you communicate science uh, without overstating what the facts are? Um, and, and this is something that I think he does extraordinarily well. Um, and you know, I tried to learn that. <laughs> Chuck, from the outset, had this vision that all of these occupations and different high-risk groups suffered the same sorts of problems fundamentally when they were sleep deprived or when they were working night shifts. So really changing how uh, blind people are treated, um, looking at shift workers and how shift workers can get adapted, how all of us when we travel, how do we adapt to new time zones, how various kinds of, of sleep disorders that have circadian bases, how these are treated. You know, all of these things stem from the fundamental work, you know, that he has done. First of all, he's an excellent lecturer. He's had many uh, fellows at Harvard who've gone out to various institutions. And I think everyone now is aware of sleep disorders, and particularly circadian rhythm disorders. It's my hope that screening for sleep disorders will be a standard part of every part of clinical medicine. It's my dream to create a new medical specialty, kind of the way Bill created one in sleep disorders medicine, in circadian medicine, because there are many things that are not a sleep disorder, but that are impacted by circadian rhythms. If I were to pick a few words to describe Chuck, I guess they would be passionate, uh, insightful, and caring. He's a good choice for the Sterling Award because he's a Stanford graduate that, that really succeeded and developed a whole field to a point where it's really an important part of sleep medicine and I think for medical issues in society as a whole. So I think Chuck is a perfect candidate for this, this award. He really embodies Stanford medicine. He works not only with federal government, with NASA, with NIH, with industry and has really revolutionized how we look at circadian medicine and how it's important and how it's really functionally relevant to all aspects of medicine. I'm so grateful to my wife and our three children for their patience with me as, as I go off the deep end working on exciting, intensive scientific projects. Being awarded the Sterling Award just it, it means the world to me. He was my hero for having moved the school. Really, I'm just overwhelmed and excited about it. So I appreciate it.